This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, to coincide with the launch of Amazon's Fallout TV show, he's taking another look at the weaponry of Fallout 4. Party starter? It's like a Piat mashed up with an M202 flash, mashed up with a generic bazooka, with a giant bayonet stuck to it. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Fallout's guns, make sure to subscribe as he'll be taking a look at the guns from the Fallout TV show in a future episode. We've also got several previous episodes on the guns of Bethesda's iconic franchise, but without further ado, it's over to Jonathan. This place is really coming together, huh? Oh, it's a horribly shortened Remington 700. I will say the, the big muzzle break sort of makes some sense here. You're losing a lot of pressure from the round with such a short barrel, but there's enough still there to give you some uncomfortable recoil. Left-handed, of course, for reasons, because the base rifle is, I think. Not entirely clear how that red dot is mounted to the receiver. It's just kind of sat there. I think if this kind of um, super short bolt action rifle makes sense anywhere and any when, it's probably here. You know, if you're really scavenging ancient weapons that may or may not work, you've probably got some with a bent barrel or shot out rifling or all of the above where the solution to make a functioning weapon is to just cut the, most of the barrel off. How plausible it is that you could gunsmith the brake onto the end in this world, I don't know. Do you think you'd find, like, say you're scavenging the wasteland and you found one of these, would it just be like the metal parts that are left? You pick one up and all the wood just crumble away as you, as you pick up the weapon? Something I spend far too long thinking about generally uh especially as my initial background was in archaeology so you know i've seen stuff dug up it doesn't take long i mean the ground is one thing lying around on the surface is another what are what 200 years in the future the wood would suffer but the metal would too you know if it's been fired and put away it's going to corrode like nobody's business if it's unfired or has been properly cleaned liberally oiled you're still going to get rust forming on the on the metal and 200 years of rust that thing's not going to work firearms would be astonishingly scarce in this world not to mention all of the viable ones will have been already cannibalized and used for a century at least so we probably shouldn't have many guns in fallout ah okay this is mostly hecate 2 as in Vegas, New Vegas. Yeah, the New Vegas anti-material rifle that we covered in a previous episode, I think that was based on the Hecate 2 as well. It's part of the Creation Club, which was Bethesda's oh. sort of paid mod slash DLC oh, okay. initiative. So semi-official. Yeah, it's like Bethesda-endorsed, community-made. This second configuration is funky, with the big square front end. Yeah, some of the gunsmithing is, uh, well, for the, for the Bolt action rifles at the very least, it just seems to be like, let's add polymer, more polymer to it, make it look squarer. Not really what you'd want to do. You know, I know it's a, it's a slow, it's not a rapid fire weapon, it's not going to overheat too badly, but it's it's meant to have a measure of precision to it. And by clamping something around the barrel, you're potentially affecting accuracy. Maybe not, it's a very thick, stiff barrel, so it might not be that relevant, but it doesn't gain you anything unless you really need to hold it out front, I guess. So if anyone's wondering what that widget on top of the barrel is, it looks like a fired case strapped to the gun. It's not that. There is a block on a certain iteration of the Hecate 2 that has a, that a very robust, wraps around the, the barrel rather than the chassis, and into which is a pivoting mount for a carrying handle, which then lies alongside the weapon. You can pick it up and it pivots around that point, the bit that looks like a sort of case head, it was throwing me. A little bit of investigation required, but that's what that is. It's, it's correct to be on there, but I'm not entirely sure the back part of it is correct. I think they might have misunderstood it as something else, like a laser sight or something, or a torch, and they've maybe modeled a button on the back of it. Then again, we don't have one to look at. Maybe they've modeled that correctly. Now this looks vaguely Warhammery. Is this an in-universe military rifle or is this borrowed from some other franchise or what? what is this? Do we know? It's another creation club weapon. Oh, okay. It markets itself as 
sort of a wastelanders or an explorer's assault rifle. Aesthetically, it sort of it sort of fits. It has that very chunky look to it, with no kind of direct real world parallel, which Fallout's always had always been a weird mixture of in terms of like parallel universe stuff like the 10 millimeter pistol that doesn't really fit in our world the chinese assault rifle that sort of does but is quite different and chunky in some ways but could be made has been made by people in this world and then obviously you're at the far end of the spectrum laser and plasma stuff and then this kind of thing where it's sort of plausibly mechanically fire army <laughs> technical term but it doesn't really make much sense something this chunky and square is going to be excessively heavy for what it is all those complicated machining slots and cuts and breeblies on it they look cool but what are they actually doing on your gun it's kind of a, a fallout take on a bar really isn't it it looks cool yeah, i'd always rather see i think given the extended time frame i'd always rather see stuff that looks like it's from our parallel future and then has ended up in the wasteland rather than something like a winchester or a tommy gun that really ought to be rust and dust by now the thing that sort of mitigates against alternate sci-fi var is that small cartridge and that very tinny light sound effect and not a huge amount of model recoil either so it feels like a weird hybrid of a, an automatic rifle and a submachine gun but it definitely fits the universe that's the main thing but if it fits the universe looks cool nothing else really matters Well outside my comfort zone with anything like this, it's so far removed from reality, but so perfect for Fallout. You know, I would never say don't put a fat man equivalent in. Down to the weird whistling of the bombs. We've got the, the um, MIRV, MIRV, Multiple Independent Reentry Vehicle. I think that's that, if I remember rightly, that stands for. That's a real thing from the world of nuclear ballistic missiles where you didn't just get one warhead. It's like sort of sort of a cluster munition for nukes. So you can have one launch platform, one, one missile that then disseminates a series of its own baby warheads and takes out multiple cities or sites. It's fairly terrifying when you're a child in the 1980s to learn about this technology. Launcher itself is kind of implied to be some sort of mechanical artillery. There's no rocket motor ignition assist. There's no expelling charge. All there is is some sort of stored energy like a trebuchet or a ballista. Maybe someone saw, and this is of course traditional for Fat Man, maybe somebody saw the British Piat and thought that it was launched by the huge spring inside that weapon, which it isn't. It's like someone took the concept of the Piat and mixed it with the uh, Davy Crockett nuclear Absolutely. mortar. Yeah, as I think we said last time, this has to be inspired by the crazy Davy Crockett infantry nuke launcher, which is not shoulder fired like this, but was fired from essentially a light mount with legs. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, had things progressed down a different path, I would, I'm, I'm sure someone would have come up with a shoulder fired mini nuke of some sort to at least try. The problem there is you're not getting enough motive force out of a shoulder weapon to get the damn thing far enough away for even a tiny nuclear payload to be in any way safe. Reconsidering my statement, I'm not sure it would ever be feasible to, to do. So this thing is weird. It's just called a microwave emitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure we've seen some sort of microwave weapon in a Fallout video before. I think we had the gamma gun at one point. Okay. I like the, uh, the weird sort of capacitors that just sort of get knocked off the back of the weapon when it when they're depleted yeah i mean my microwave doesn't do this if yours does this you need to get it serviced what a i mean again a very a very fallout appropriate weapon fusion of rough machine steel and straps and bolts with vaguely plausible looking electrical parts and a sort of radar dish emitter i quite like it it's, it's an interesting take on the classic sci-fi ray gun really and i suppose it's got some weird reality parallels because i know we've or, or yeah. people have tried to weaponize microwaves in the past. It's like if that initiative remained, but 
the collective thoughts within the people of the Fallout universe has remained, yeah, we can definitely do some damage by shooting microwaves at people. I don't want to alarm you, Dave, but I, I think microwave weapons are still a thing. I think they're still vehicle mounted at this point and of questionable legality, but um, I think research is still ongoing. It wouldn't look anything like this, to be clear. It would be invisible. Microwave radiation is invisible. There's no sport to spill in blood if the person can earn it. Lucky for us, the Commonwealth. I've thrown in a bunch of different laser weapons because I, was I think say. we talked about it before, but not really showcased it deeply. The Fallout 4 element of taking like a core weapon and being able to turn it into, you know, laser shotgun, laser sniper rifle, laser automatic weapon. This is almost like uh, building German words here with, with a, a hugely long compound name for the thing that you've created there that barely doesn't really fit properly. It has to be, the font size has to be reduced, it's that big. I think I've commented before on the reloads being needlessly clunky on Fallout laser guns. Like, why would we abandon, at this point, centuries of detachable magazine units for an awkward thing on top with a lever that looks like you could easily damage it? External pipes that could get dented. Yeah, there's a reason why the gas tube on an AR-15 is under the handguards where it can't get clonked. You want your, in, your insides on the inside, but they don't half look cool when they're on the outside, so that's fine. Always like the big chunky kind of cast metal bodies to these weapons, the laser pistol notably. Really reminiscent of Cold War technology. I do like how sort of feasible things like the laser weapons and the variants are. There's obviously like thought gone in to what to change to make a gun work as a shotgun, as an, as an assault rifle. Like you can you can piece together in your mind like, oh yeah, maybe if a laser is shot through a prism and scattered, that becomes a shotgun. Or yeah. with the assault rifle, you're spinning components to keep it from overheating for a heat-based weapon. I suppose the sniper rifle, you're just chucking a bigger barrel on it to, I don't know how lasers work, but I'm sure a bigger laser pen emits a bigger laser. <laughs> That's kind of fallout in a, in a nutshell, isn't it? It kind of feels like it works, but if you look at it for any length of time, it really doesn't make any sense. You know, a laser is a laser. It's a pinpoint accurate bit of light. <laughs> <laughs> light energy uh, concentrated on a, on a single spot. Almost nothing of what we see here is how lasers really work, but it, it's how they work in our minds from decades of science fiction. Okay, this looks like your standard Fallout minigun, which for some reason is, I think, always chambered in five millimeters. Kind of implied to be an alternate universe 5.56, five, but the cartridge cases always look bigger than five millimeters, and five millimeters is very small for a, a Gatling gun, electrically operated Gatling gun. I don't think I've ever looked at the reload of the Fallout 4 minigun. It's, it's pretty fudged, but seeing like a big sort of spiral of rounds come out the back yeah. and shoved back in, it's pretty interesting. It is interesting and, and cool looking. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the drum is hollow at the back and you're shoving a... Is it a coil of belt belted ammo or is it literally just like a helical... Yeah, it looks, it looks like a big spiral of rounds. Weird. Um, speaking of weird, the barrel unit on this is bizarre, covered in all sorts of spiky stuff, which I guess is a bayonet type feature because I'm now seeing someone getting pummeled with it. I don't think anyone's put a bayonet on a minigun in real life. So the real world parallel for this is really not the minigun at all. It's the micro gun, 5.56 five, version of the minigun. Lighter, because it can afford to be. So if you ever were going to go handheld with a minigun, it'd be a micro gun. Sort of fits with the five millimeter. If this one is also in five millimeter, I haven't seen. It doesn't have the, it has the motor built in, but it doesn't have the linker, de-linker, the power supply, any real plausible, well, it has the ammo. We'll let them have the ammo, <laughs> but you're missing some key features. I hope those raiders pay for what they've done. Party starter. Ah, now the trigger unit on this is a straight lift from the Piat. So if you look at the Piat, you'll see it has a huge lever style trigger that's pivoted directly off one side of the big guard round. And that's what this thing has. And that sort of that webbing wrap is somewhat reminiscent of World War II launchers generally. The quad reload unit there 
is a little bit like it's like a Piat mashed up with an M202 flash, mashed up with a generic bazooka with a giant bayonet stuck to it. So they appear to be self-contained rockets. Now, why you need the, tube, the launch tube when they're all firing from the static quad sort of pepper box barrel assembly is unclear. The 202 is just, just what you see on the tin. <laughs> it's that rectangular blocky unit. Once the rocketry does its thing, you, it's like a milk bottle in principle. You don't need a, a pressure bearing tube. The tube on, a, on something like a bazooka is there to is there to protect you from the exhaust plume. So you, are, you either want a sort of M202 style unit or you want a tube that you reload. There's a reason why you won't see this in the, in reality. What I'm surprised they didn't do is a rotary unit that rotates each one of those four into alignment with the tube. Because in reality, the top two are going to be putting rocket exhaust directly into your face, or nearly directly into your face. Oh, now this thing has the, ugh, one of those horrible sights, sights with the screws just inserted in from either side. If you were going to do it that way, for whatever reason, you'd want a single screw, probably have to come in from the top, giving you a point of aim, and you could screw it in and out to adjust your point of impact. A screw in from either side has never made any, any real sense. If it makes you feel any better, this is probably the worst weapon in the game. Kind of looks like it is. It doesn't do any direct damage. You're relying oh. on the different munitions that you're putting in. The oh, syringe rifle see. will take like different drugs, essentially, whether they send someone berserk, send them calm, make yeah. it so that they're poisoned. The actual impact of of that does no no damage, and it sucks. <laughs> It's a cool concept though. You know, we've seen a couple of games where things have been launching syringes of one sort or another and they don't they just do damage. They don't or maybe they heal. Something with an actual range of effects that you can deliver at distance is a really cool idea. So it's a shame if that doesn't hasn't been implemented really well. It sort of found a new life in the Fallout show, where the the Lucy's first weapon, you can see it in the trailers, so not a spoiler, is like an air weapon that shoots drugs. They don't make super mutants lock up and paralyze so they fall over humorously, but... Which is cool, by the way. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm very excited about, about the series. If one thing gets me back playing Fallout 4 again and finishing it, it'll be watching the TV series. Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. Right, those were more guns from Fallout 4. Four. Lo always loved Fallout. Um, I will go back and finish Fallout 4 at some point. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please do check out our website, social media channels, maybe even the real museums um, here at the Royal Armouries. Uh, we do appreciate if you do that. But we'll see you here again next week.